Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Well, originally, we were only going to do one episode of Purple Daily today on this Tuesday. But then, just kind of based on our recording schedules, Patrick Royce feeling a little under the weather. So we're kind of moving him around different days. And then... Old Mike Tannenbaum, former general manager, longtime Jets general manager, came out with a mock draft on ESPN platforms. And it has something regarding the Vikings that we have not seen yet. It's wild, you guys. It's you guys great. wanted you got you two actually. I didn't say you guys. You you two wanted trades, and Mike Tannenbaum listened and delivered times ten. Mike Tannenbaum is the rare rare one-time executive who just now gets in the 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 mud of the reckless speculation pile and just rolls around in it like this is really rare jim bowden in baseball does it too yep but i mean (laughs) these are guys who are really really smart because i feel like they they've said you know what first of all i'm probably not going to get another chance right but more importantly i'm making good money here with no pressure so when Greeny's like, yeah, go home and come up with the most reckless mock draft you can, Tannenbaum's like, okay, I'm in. But what's great is he's yeah. a former GM, so it lends some credence to it. That's, I just love this. It's amazing. Yeah, it's like I don't know that if he's talking to people or if he's just making this up. We're going to get to it in a second. <laughs> but we, we do have a show announcement to make. So I know – so we sold out the Fillmore in like 72 hours, which is amazing. And thank you, guys. The draft party at the Fillmore on April 25th. Thursday, April 25th. It's been sold out for a few weeks now. So a couple things on that front. Number one, on Wednesday, April 3rd at 10 a.m., we're going to make a, a 10 pairs of VIP tickets available for purchase. $100 a pop. So we have 20 tickets. They're going to be sold in 10 pairs. And they'll be available at scorenorth.com slash party at 10 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, April 3rd. So... Be ready if you haven't gotten your tickets yet. That's scorenorth.com slash party Wednesday, April 3rd at 10 a.m. We've got that's all we have. Like we literally we're, we're, we're trying to make room for some extra people. We also want it to be comfortable and um, it's a big venue and a lot of you are going to be there. So we, we only have a certain amount left. So that's number one. Number two, we've partnered with Element Hotel right above the Fillmore 15 percent room rate discount for all Purple Daily Draft Party attendees. Uh, That's April 25th through the 28th. Go to scorenorth.com slash hotel to get your discounted hotel rate. Scorenorth.com slash hotel. So we got a few extra tickets. We'll throw them out there on Wednesday, April 3rd. Judd, you're muted. You muted yourself. It's like he looked like you wanted to talk for like 30 seconds there, and I couldn't tell if he was muted or what was happening. No, no, no. I coughed again. Um, No, I, I was going to say that this is like when Taylor Swift has some tickets open up. I just like, the like last that. second. Yep. Yep. And yep. it's like, oh my God, we gotta get okay. Well, that's awesome. T Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, which I also yep. experienced a few weeks ago, which was insane, and also Purple Daily. The, the hottest tickets in town. Can't get them. Can't get them anywhere else. No. So Love be, be ready. I be ready. Mock. Mock. Okay. This I Mike Tannenbaum mock. mock draft is wild. Let's start at the top. ESPN.com. He has, with the number one pick, the Chicago Bears selecting Caleb Williams. Then he has the commander selecting Drake May, number two. Okay. Patriots taking Jaden Daniels. All right, Mike. Mike's going chalk here for the most part. Then he's got the Cardinals selecting J.J. McCarthy. What? Mike? Reckless speculation. So he says, look, quarterback availability is crucial in today's NFL. 66 passers started at least one game last year. and Kyler Murray hasn't played a full season since 2020. The Cardinals should be interested in maybe resetting at that position. You might point to Murray's contract, which includes $35.5 million guaranteed for this year, $30 million guaranteed next year. But teams routinely eat substantial dead money these days for a better opportunity at the position. And besides, I think the Cardinals could get a first-round pick back in exchange for J- for Kyler Murray. Stay tuned. I might have something up my sleeve later in the draft. So when they revealed this with Greeny on Get Up This Morning, 
I'm like, okay, like, okay, where's this going? What are you doing? And let's, then the curveball. So number five, Chargers take Joe Alt, the tackle from Notre Dame. Giants take Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. Titans take J.C. Latham, the offensive tackle from Alabama. And the Falcons take Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama. Bears then take Marvin Harrison Jr. at nine. So Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to nine. Oh, <laughs> Which, hey, the draft gets weird sometimes, but I'd be shocked. And Mike gets weird sometimes, but that's the point. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason why Mike's on TV right now. And then at 10, he's got the Jets taking Olu Fishanu, the third offensive tackle off the board, and that puts the Vikings on the clock at number 11. Where all hell breaks loose. Mike Tannenbaum has a projected trade here with the Minnesota Vikings trading the number 11 pick to the Arizona Cardinals for quarterback Kyler Murray and a third round pick, the number 66. Reckless speculation. Your thoughts. Well, first of all, so what's interesting is, is um, the first person that Greeny asked to comment on this idea was Bart Scott, who I thought was going to okay. say, you're absolutely crazy from the Viking standpoint, but he actually said the opposite. He's like, you're trading a third, you're, you're including a third round pick and getting a first round pick back and sending Kyler Murray to the Vikings. Are you crazy, Mike Tannenbaum? My thoughts are this though. So, first of all, I love the effort. So let, let's just start right there. Mike Tannenbaum, Bravo, dude. My I team. love, I love, you You were told, don't turn in the typical <laughs> assignment. And so you had to get creative, and you did. So I am not going to dock you any points for sitting at the kitchen table and coming up with this just sort of mind-blowing experiment that we have not seen previously. That being said... Yes, teams can pay, you know, teams will pay to trade players. They'll pay on a dead cap. Uh, all of that, though, and his point was J.J. McCarthy, I think, is seven years Kyler Murray's junior. But, six years, yeah. Or six years, but I don't see it from the Viking standpoint because Kyler Murray has not been able to maintain his health. And, like, when he is healthy, he can be a joystick. I mean, we we saw that a couple of years ago when the Vikings played the Cardinals. Um, but he, he has not been able to stay healthy. And the background stuff, which I'm sure we can talk about, O'Connell basically went into chapter and verse, and I love it, of what he is looking from a quarterback for, for mentally standpoint, from that standpoint. Um, Kyler Murray, unless, the, unless everything has been misreported, is not that guy. So I absolutely positively say no, but I love the effort to try to find a unique angle here. Uh, on Judd's point about KOC talking about quarterback, so he had the bigger quote yesterday in Orlando talking about building changing quarterbacks don't just change the facilities. Any room they ever walk into, they light it up, they change it, they impact. You can see that on display authentically when you do the full process with those trips. And unless there is something about Kyler Murray that I don't know, I don't think that is Kyler Murray. I don't think that that's how Kevin O'Connell would view, I should say, Kyler Murray. And the Vikings moved off of Kirk Cousins and are paying Sam Darnold, what, $10 million as a bridge quarterback and are in prime position to draft a quarterback. So why would then they go ahead and acquire a quarterback who's making $35 million guaranteed for the next two seasons? So I, I just... Yes, creativity, great, but I, I would have a hard no on this trade. Well, a, cu a couple things here. This is just, again, bravo to Mike Tannenbaum. You, you understood the assignment. You understood the mission. It is reckless speculation season. And, hey, you just got a bonus episode of Purple Daily out of us. So here we are. All the things that Declan just said about Kyler's demeanor, his leadership, that stuff really makes me nervous. The fact that they had to even entertain putting a clause in his contract for playing video games too much. Right. That we needed to, to prove that you're studying film. Well, a real franchise leading quarterback doesn't need to be reminded or nudged in a contract or otherwise to work hard. 
And there's something a little off about his personality, too. If you see him in interviews, you see him on the sidelines, he's kind of a loner, kind of a powder type type guy. So those things do make me nervous. So this is not my first choice, and I am not in on this. But just from an on-field perspective, he's only 26 years old. He's a former number one overall pick. His best season was in 2021. This is kind of before the coaching change chaos and one of his injuries. He was number one in the NFL in 2021 in big time throw rate because he he will just he'll sling it, man. He'll run around and he'll make huge plays. He was top 10 in PFF grade, top 10, top seven in QBR, sixth in yards per attempt as a young quarterback, 10 years younger than a Kirk Cousins. Right. So I think if if you're asking, like, what does the best version of Kyler Murray look like in a better organization with a better head coach, weapons, all these things? He is a top 10 NFL quarterback that sometimes bangs on the door of being more like top five or top six, but he's not on a rookie scale contract anymore. Declan kind of brought up the the money. It's pretty hard to get out from underneath that contract the first couple years, although the Cardinals would eat some of the bonus dead cap. So you wouldn't be on the hook for as much of the cap. Somebody would have to lay that out who's smarter than we are. So I don't know, man, like. You'd be paying him a lot, but not nearly as much as he would have been paying for Kirk Cousins. And he's younger and better and more mobile. But it doesn't make me want to move off the idea of just drafting a young quarterback. Like the rookie scale contract aspect of this is so appealing. Right. And there's six dudes that you could choose from in the first or early second rounds. Right. So bravo to Mike Tannenbaum. Okay, that's creative. Kyler Murray, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Kevin O'Connell's tutelage. But I'd... I'm kind of done with the big quarterback contracts for right now. And I don't get the feeling at all um, from the tone of the Vikings message, which is really, really intriguing. I don't get the feeling that their, uh, their default here, their, their want is to get a veteran QB. When Mark, when Mark Wilf uh, yesterday talked about Sam Darnold, he basically admitted, yeah, we signed him, but but, we're but going we have to, a plan but beyond we're, him, yes, yeah. yes. I have never... Look, when you remove Quasi's attempt to spin things and create confusion, Mark Wilf does not really have the BS going for him. Like, you can always tell what he's thinking. And Kevin O'Connell, for a coach, is not really great at lying or circumventing the truth. So... I don't have any sense that the Vikings are like, you know what we'd really like to do? Replace Kirk Cousins with another vet, especially in Kyler Murray's case, a highly paid one. Yeah. But 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 I do love the fact that that Tannenbaum found a way to get McCarthy as the four pick to the team that has the four pick. The the amazing thing about that though, that that, that we have not discussed much, because it doesn't directly involve the Vikings. If Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to nine. He has to fire everybody because that would mean not working out for teams at the combine at the pro day yeah. cost him big. May have like, cost him, yeah. like clearly they've been told, Hey, 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 just dude, you're going to the Cardinals, right? Like you're going the fourth pick. There's nothing that you can do on the field as far as workouts go. So if he falls to nine, I am, I'm firing everyone. And then I'm firing him again, dude. But, he, but here's it. So here's another aspect to this. This is okay. Just let's let's entertain this Mike Tannenbaum scenario. The more you think about it, so the scenarios that we're laying out mostly here involve cobbling together first round picks and moving up the board for a rookie quarterback. Right? Mike Tannenbaum is saying, no, no, no. You get you can keep the twenty three. You can right. keep your two thousand twenty five first round pick, and we'll even give you an extra third. We'll we'll let you draft on day two. Right now, you don't even have a day two pick. We'll give you one of the first picks in the in the third round. And you get Kyler Murray. You get an already established, credible, competent NFL quarterback with the upside of maybe being, you know, the sixth best quarterback in the league or something. And and he has the Vikings drafting the defensive tackle from Illinois, Jerzon Newton at 23 to round out this mock. And he explains how this is a huge need. Jerzon Newton may be a little undersized at the position, but versatility, production, uh, he's very coveted for an NFL defense. So you'd be getting Kyler Murray and you'd keep the 23, keep your 2025 first round pick. That part of it makes it a little more appealing and that you can still build out some young talent. 
as we talked about yesterday, the risk of putting together a bunch of first round picks to move up the board for your guy is that you could be wrong and you don't have the first round picks next year. You have essentially a two year gap where there's nothing, but your roster is in a lot better shape right now than Carolina's and some of these other teams. So I'm still out on this, but I, I see where Mike Tannenbaum is going here and he's trying to, one of his lines in here for the explanation was this allows Minnesota instead of rebuilding to be competitive in 2024. Right. But here we are again, around and around we go. Right. right. And do you want to pay? So, so yes, you, the, uh, the price on the picks is much less in this scenario, but do you want to pay the tax on the contract? Like, like you're part of the reason why you're going to potentially trade a lot to move up is the five years of complete control. So like you can keep your 23rd pick. That's awesome. But now you're going to pay a tax again. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. And, and as we have seen now, because every March you start to see it, you can't circumvent the cap. I know that some fans think, oh, it's, you know, no, come on. The cap's fake. The cap's phony. No, you can only do so, uh, so much. The other problem with that tax is the way things stand right now and why I think it's pretty easy to follow the breadcrumbs of the Vikings intentions here is if they were to trade for Murray, okay, you've got him. He's not as much as Kirk, but he's not cheap. And now you potentially don't have the luxury of the Jefferson contract. Like right now, Jefferson's just going to get the bag and you can handle that. But if you bring Murray on board, now you got to look at that as far as how that's going to offset those yeah. contracts. And now can you afford to add as much on defense? Like, the yep. rookie quarterback just allows you a freedom that the second that you, if you trade for a guy like Kyler, that essentially goes away. I mean, wouldn't it be great if, if, if instead of sweating whether you should pay Kirk Cousins $45 million to be the 12th best quarterback or Kyler Murray to be the whatever he's ranked right now, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great if you could just draft the ninth best quarterback who's got upside to be the fourth best, third best, second best quarterback? And you're paying him nothing for the first five years, first four years. Like that's, I keep coming back to that. If I'm going to pay a quarterback Kirk Cousins money or Kyler Murray money, I need to be assured that those guys can carry a team with flaws. Right. And those are two prime examples of guys that can't. Right. Those, they're very good. They're definitely among the, in any given year, they're among the seven to 15 best in the world at playing quarterback. Right. But those guys aren't carrying a non-perfect roster to the NFC Championship game. So what's the point in paying them when you have a chance to draft a quarterback for way, way, way less money? And that's the thing is, in the case of Jefferson, you know exactly what he can do. So if you pair him with the right QB, unless he gets hurt, you're never going to say, well, Justin Jefferson didn't do his, didn't carry his weight. So like that's to me that's the difference between paying a guy who you consider to be top three, if not the top, at his position, as opposed to this quarterback carousel of well, so and so is the eleventh best, but it's good enough. Well, no, it's really not. Yeah. So like this this goes back to our our long held discussions for the last six years about the construction of your roster, where you pay guys, and what you know you're going to get. Justin Jefferson, if he's playing. There's not going to be a lot of questions about, well, Justin Jefferson's really gone off the cliff, or I thought he was the best, but he's really the 12th best. Like, if you're torturing that, you're you're probably paying the wrong person. Yeah. So, wow, dude. Mike Tannenbaum. I got another mock for you guys here, too. You might as well just turn this into gonna, a... You're not going to top that. I want a mock. A mock roundup. Tannenbaum coming in hot. This next one is presented by our friends at, uh, let's go with uh, Fletcher Lake Lodge here today, Judd. A great little off-season vacation oh. spot for the Purple Daily audience. In fact, guess what? I would I would tell the Vikings brass, I would say when this draft is done, take some time off and do it by going to Fletcher Lake Lodge, a full-service fishing lodge located in Ontario, Canada. Only accessible, as you saw, by flying in there on a traditional Canadian bush plane. The remote setting ensures exceptional trophy fishing for guests. We're talking about trophy walleye, northern muskie, smallmouth bass. Cabins accommodate groups from 2 to 12 uh, and include daily service. A dock staff prepares your fully outfitted boat each morning. Jeannie and her staff, guess what? They're going to treat you like family. That's why so many people who go to Fletcher Lake Lodge go back. 
Visit FletcherLake.com. That's FletcherLake.com to learn more or book your reservation today. Just look at that beauty right there. It is a beauty right there. Okay, this one's from The Athletic. It's a brand new mock draft from The Athletic from Ben Standig. He is the architect of this one. Benji. Old Benjamin. He's got the Bears taking Caleb Williams. He's got the Commanders taking Jaden Daniels. He's got the Patriots taking J.J. McCarthy. Third overall. Oh, this is the... This- this is the conversation. This goes back to some of those anonymous emails we were getting last week about the yep. Patriots doing a bunch of due diligence, talking to Jim Harbaugh behind the scenes. Well, so interesting. Pelissero threw out yesterday that the commanders might be targeting J.J. McCarthy, according to his sources. And Tom, I, I will say this, Tom might be wrong, but he's not guessing. He's talking to people. Yep. And he's talking to people outside the Washington organization which means there's no reason for them to lie to Tom. Hmm. We'll do a deeper dive on that, and even we can get back to the Mark Wilf comments on a second episode of Purple Hmm. Daily today. But that leaves the number four pick open for business here, according to this mock, and we have a trade. Or all of a sudden, poof, the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock after swinging a trade with the Cardinals. So here's the trade. Vikings acquire the number four and also the 138 and the 162. So they get they get a little kickback. They get, what's the 138? That's like That's a fifth was, round pick. I was just going to look. I wish they would say what <clears throat> round. So it's 32, 64, 96 Uh-oh. gets you to the edge of the third. But then there's comp picks. Phil's doing math. I'm out. See it's you. like an early, it's an early fourth and a Wait. late fourth. It's two fourths, right? Because the Vikings have a 108. That's a fourth. And you said this was a one. This is a one. Th- well, no, it's a one thirty-eight. So this might be a fifth. I don't know. It's like, yeah. it's fairly early day three picks day that three. you're getting okay. kicked back. Okay. okay, okay, day Sorry. three. Sorry. Just go with day I three. just wish they would say that in the story. You know, hey, fifth round pick. But then they give up the eleven, the twenty-three, the one hundred eight, and a two thousand twenty-five first rounder. So the Vikings give up three yeah. first rounders plus yeah. the one hundred eight. Yeah. They do get a little kickback at least, and they select. Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina. I I wonder, uh, you got to wonder too, like what do the Vikings know about what the commanders and the Patriots are doing? Are they, is Mark Wilf all giddy on NFL Network because they know that Drake May is falling to them or are they just giddy because it's draft season and they have a Or is there an agreement in principle on how the parameters are going to work or are are there multiple, are there multiple scenarios? You know, the, the interesting thing is, and we don't know, know this, but when you sort of look at the profiles of the players themselves, j- just like on film and stuff, Drake May, to me, seems like he, he would o- excite O'Connell the most. Now, I don't know personality stuff, and, and as Dex said, that yeah. that is, you know, and thank you, Kevin O'Connell, for finally saying I actually care about the person I'm getting as opposed to just the athlete, but... Um, I think Drake May might fit the profile the most of what like O'Connell wants day day one. And and I will say this, and yes, uh, I, I think we talked I think I talked to Fornis about this last week. Uh yeah, the Vikings were put in a tough situation when Kirk got, got hurt in trying to get guys set to play. But it was very o- clear to me at least what O'Connell wanted still though. Like like what his template is. Like I don't think he wants a guy that's all of a sudden just going to go away from from what he sees as the fundamental basis of his system. And so I just feel like Drake May is the top fit there. But, of course, if he turns out to be a putz, O'Connell could say, you know, I just don't like the kid personally. There's a, co- there a couple of things to note here. One of them being there's, a, there's an anonymous NFL scout that's quoted in this write-up on this athletic mock. It says the variance among league sources on May following a choppy final college season ranges from a longtime quarterbacks coach and offensive assistant saying, I like May, but when I see the amount of work it will take to have him reach his potential, we'll be fired first. To another scout's praise, which says he'll be the best quarterback of this entire group. So the 
this sums up the inexact science. But yes. if you're projecting like best case scenario for all these quarterbacks, I guess it's hard to overlook Jaden Daniels and just the crazy athletic ability, the deep ball ability. But Drake May has that six foot four, two hundred thirty pound Josh Allen frame and the athletic ability. And the other thing to note too is in 2018, Josh McCown and Sam Darnold would watch every Drake May high school football game together, according to Alec Lewis, who covers the Vikings for The Athletic. McCown would watch May alongside Darnold, and they'd offer some collective feedback. McCown and Darnold were watching every single game. They were watching everything and breaking down every one of Drake May's games in high school, yeah. at least for that year. Well, and, and the hiring of McCown is very interesting, right? Like, like it can't be dismissed that this guy knows Drake May really, really well. So I just don't think that O'Connell would be disappointed to get to get him. Now, the one thing that makes me feel better about this entire thing, too, though, is for a long time what those scouts said as far as what the Vikings did on quarterbacks was important to a certain degree because you because you were like, well, who really knows what they're doing there? Like the mm -hmm. quarterbacks coach or the OC might come in and be like, yeah, I love this guy, but they're not the head coach. In Zimmer's case, the head coach didn't give a damn. Like, like he, I think he liked personalities, but he didn't really know what, what he was probably going for on film as much. And Spielman was Spielman. So we get this wide variance of, of analysis of guys like McCarthy and May. Yeah. But, but again, I'll go back to until he proves he can't, I trust O'Connell to have a really good opinion that's going to be in, way more informed than we previously seen here. Yeah. So a couple, couple crazy mocks. And also, congratulations to the, the Athletic and Mike Tannenbaum for including trades in their mocks. Again, if, you, if you're still yeah. mocking without yeah. doing yeah. trades, don't even bother. Yeah, just don't issue it. You're, you're lazy. You're, you're, I question your work ethic. That's what I, as a mocker. Show it to your cat or dog, but then just throw it away. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. right. Like, like if you do Tannenbaum basically, and you could say he's crazy, that's fine. But he basically hit the, like, like, it's like when you turn in the project to the teacher and the teacher's like, I didn't really like the project, but you fit everything I asked for accordingly. It sounds like my education system. Yeah. So it's yeah. a strong grade. Yeah. Like I, I did a, I did a high school paper once uh, for my teacher that didn't really, really like sports on the use of face shields in hockey. And he basically Classic. said it was really boring, but you did it perfectly. So I can't, so, you know, so it, it gets a good grade. I did something when I was in first grade, first grade, or maybe it was second grade. might've been second grade. It was either first, I think it was second grade. My, my first grade teacher's name was Miss Fish, Mrs. Fish. And then Mrs. Sacco it was yeah, before, no. before Mr. Sacco, the mankind thing came around. It's a little bit before that, but uh, we had to pick, an animal, like our favorite animal, and then write a paper, a one-page paper about the animal. And I chose the Seahawk because football, right? Seahawk. Sure. And uh, by the end of the exercise, the teacher informed me that, like, there isn't actually such an animal as a Seahawk. There's a hawk, there's a seagull, but they've kind of, like, molded two birds into one. And mm. uh, we're going to have to have you choose a, a different animal to write about. Did you go home crying? Story. Were you upset about that? Were you were you okay with that? I was very. I wound up choosing like a tiger or something. I was going to say, what did you pivot to? Ferocious. Okay, yeah, okay. I think it was a tiger or a no, it was a tiger guy. shark. A tiger shark. I think I chose. I I enjoyed the monkeys. Anytime I went to the zoo as a kid, I would just. I love me a good monkey or a yeah. gorilla. They're smart, you know. They're like mm -hmm. humans, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can't trust them. No, you can't. No, 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 no. I see some of those videos where you know the baby chimpanzee who was raised by the humans, you know, runs up and and hugs and loves and their humans. I no chance. Steals your and steals your wallet. And, yeah. and steals well, your wallet. And eventually and, kills and the everything entire else. family. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Mauls the entire family to death. Yeah, yeah you don't you don't want to love push monkeys, that too but far. stay away from. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, all go. right, that's Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die, at the hands of a family monkeys. of monkeys. <laughs>